Welcome to class one of the mediumship course. Slightly different than what the psychic course is because we're working in totally different energies. But just out of interest, can you all give me a hands up uh, if you already have been able to make a connection, a link with spirit? That just lets me know that thing is. Is everybody? Okay. Is there anybody that hasn't? And if you haven't, if you can just hit the reactions at the bottom there, it gives me a thumbs up or a wave. Just give me a thumbs up if you have never made a connection with spirit. Nobody? Good. That says my, uh, I'm just admitting another one here. Okay. So what we're going to look at today is the ethics of mediumship. And a lot of people don't really think about this, but there's an awful lot of responsibility if you're working with the spirit world and you're giving messages and evidence to people that are bereaved. There, you have to remember their emotional state. You have to remember many a time when they come because they want that evidence. Their, their emotions are all over the show and they're not always thinking very clearly. So it is for us to, to manage that, to keep ourselves calm, to keep them calm, and a big thing here as well is their expectation. I've had people come for readings that actually are expecting to see them materialize in front of them. Uh, and that is nothing at all to do with the mental mediumship, which is what we do. That's all about physical mediumship. So it's ensuring that you, that they have their expectations in the right place. The other thing here is, is how we get the evidence and how we give the evidence. Now, the majority of people or mediums tend to rely on clairvoyance. They want to see. So would you all agree with that, that you think that is the best form of evidence, is the clairvoyance, what you see? Just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down or go for the yes and no. Those of you that feel that clairvoyance is the best evidence, if you look to the side there on the chat, you've got a little tick and you've got a little cross. If you just, what your opinion is on that, do you agree or disagree? The tick, if you agree, the clairvoyance is the best form of evidence. And the cross, if you disagree with that. I know there's no in between you there. I can see uh, Katrina there is going, not too sure, don't know really if I do or I don't. Well, I'll tell you something now. If you ever speak to an investigator, either from a crime scene or an, an accident scene, they will tell you the worst type of evidence they have and witness testimony is what people see. Because everybody sees it from a different perspective. And it's this thing of how we describe things. I love to do it in some of my classes sometimes where I'll take one student and say, okay, Everybody have a good look at this student, this lady, this person. And now I'm going to ask them to leave the room. And what I want you to do is to take two or three minutes to write down a description of that person for me. Uh, and I tell you, it's the most funny, amusing thing you can ever do. Because I'll bring that person back in the room and I'll ask a person like Amanda and say, OK, Amanda, now read your description of Katrina. And... It really is. You, you will have a height discrepancy of anything to three inches to a foot. Their hair colour would be any shade of black, brown, sometimes green or purple. Their eye colour, their, their posture, and that poor person stands there and goes, wow, are they, are they actually describing me? <laughs> I'm nothing like that. And they might have known that person for 12 months, two years, three years, four years or even more in a class. When we're looking at uh, a spirit communicator, we've maybe only got a couple of seconds. We might only have a click second to take all that description in. And the other thing is as well, how we see people. I remember doing an evidential uh, message from the uh, platform one night, and luckily it was a family of six. There was the mother there, there was three of the siblings, and there was a couple of the in-laws there. And I was given a description of their father. And one said, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. My dad was about five foot ten. And one said, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Your dad was only five foot three. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. And it's this perspective of how people see things. So, yes, it is good to give 
a, 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 an evidence of a description that you have seen, but it can sometimes cause more confusion than what it can give clarity. So that is what we're going to be looking at today is all the different kind of senses that we can use to, uh, to enable us to give a better, clearer clarity. So I've got this up here and it is the handout for today. So you will be getting it uh, at some point. But if you look here, we have the clairvoyance, which is clear seeing. So most people know that and, and understand that. And that is the one that everybody, most people say to me, that is what I really want, Gail. I want to be able to see him. I really do want to be able to see him. And I never see him. I just hear him or sense him because we put so much weight on that. And yet if you actually talk to a blind person that's been blind from birth, very often their view of this world is far more accurate than ours because they know how it feels, they know how it smells, they, they, they know the, the ambience of it. So they're very aware if they're in a field of corn or if they're in a field that is a meadow or if they're in one that has just been freshly mowed uh, or, or, or turfed over. But they will know that because they smell it, they feel it, they sense it, they hear it. So our vi 